Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making an easy, amazing apple bread. So let's get started. First off, set that oven to 350, and now the apples. You want one large apple for this, or one and a half smaller apples. Unlike in a pie where you really consider how the apple bakes, is it a hard or a soft apple? This doesn't matter because you can grate these, you can cut them into chunks, and they're really going to soften up and just give their flavor to the bread. So you can use a Honey Crisp, a Cosmic Crisp, a Granny Smith, anything you like, even a Red Delicious, if that's what you wanna do. Oh, right, coring your apples is always a good idea. I just ordered an apple corer, but it's not gonna be here for a bit. So I'm using a cannoli form. Now, using the large side of your grater, just grate that apple up. This is like zucchini bread, but in my opinion, it might just be the most delicious thing for the fall. We're gonna give a special treatment to the top of our bread and make it amazing. The last time I made this bread, I had the perfect, like stereotypical large apple. And today I was like, wait a second, these are all medium sized apples. What am I gonna do? That's 100 grams of grated apple, so I think Once I cut it in half, you want like 170-ish grams of apple. Earlier, I mentioned that you could grate your apple or chop it into chunks. I'm gonna do both today, so I'll have a little bit of apple throughout, but I'll also see some beautiful jewel-like chunks sprinkled here and there. Cutting them into smaller pieces, almost like you were dicing an onion. Perfect. Now we can keep our scale, put the apple aside, and get those dry ingredients together. Into a large bowl, I want one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. That's 180 grams. And did I tell you this recipe is a one bowl recipe? Everything mixes up right here. It's so easy to make. You'll be making this over and over, especially when apples are in season. Now I want half a cup of granulated sugar. That's 100 grams. And half a cup of brown sugar. Sugar, my teeth whistled. Sugar. If you're storing your brown sugar in a canister, marshmallows will help keep it soft. I got so tired of having lumps in my brown sugar because I was packing it into a measuring cup that I decided I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm just gonna use the scale and my life will be so much easier. Now I want three quarters of a teaspoon of cinnamon. You have to have cinnamon with apple. It's not even an option. Half a teaspoon of baking soda. This needs an acid to react with. Luckily, the acid is in the apples and the brown sugar. One quarter teaspoon of pow, I didn't say brown powder. A quarter teaspoon of baking powder. There we go. Grab a microplane, and we're gonna have a quarter teaspoon of grated nutmeg. I love grating my own nutmeg. Ah, ah. I love grating my own nutmeg. It has so much just like flavor and vibrance when it's freshly grated, but you could definitely use the powdered stuff too. Ah. Slippery. My scale is done, so I'm gonna set that aside. Grab a whisk, this is a Dutch whisk, and I love it for batters. It really lets you like mix things up nicely, but because it's flat, stuff doesn't get stuck inside of the whisk. It's so annoying. I'm gonna give this a mix and start breaking up all that brown sugar and making sure all the spices and leavening agents are well distributed. There has to be salt in here. I almost forgot one quarter teaspoon of salt. We of course need some salt to give us balance. Otherwise it would just be like kind of dull and sweet, despite having the apples in there. I'm strategizing on how to use as few bowls as possible because I do have to melt some butter and I can't melt it in my hands. So into a small bowl, I'm adding my stick of room temperature butter. It's gonna melt over half power in like 30 second bursts. And I like to keep the paper on top because if there's a butter explosion, it helps contain the mess. So melt it up. Melt it up. All microwaved up. Pour your butter right into the dry mixture. Two large room temperature eggs. Add them right into that bowl. Makes me so happy when I can do less dishes. Ah. Give them a quick mix. They also get added right into your batter. Now we're gonna stir this together. And I'm warning you, the batter's gonna be like thick and weird, but the apples are gonna go in and they're gonna release their moisture immediately and really make this an amazing, luscious bread. I'm like, cup bread. All right, stir this until it's almost combined. It's okay if you see some flour here and there. 
That looks great. And you can see so thick. You're like, what is this nonsense? Trust me, it's gonna work out. You have one more choice though, my friends. Here's the deal. Do you want a soft, lush, amazing apple bread? Or do you want a soft, lush, amazing apple bread with crunchy nuts inside? I love having walnuts or pecans or both in mine. So let's grab half a cup or about 60 grams of nuts. and Just give them a quick chop. I'm using walnuts today because I love walnuts and apples even though pecans are my favorite. And if you don't know how to toast nuts, oh my gosh, it's so easy. Pop them onto <laughs> a flat thing. Pop them onto a saute pan and over medium heat, heat them up, mixing often until they start smelling. It's gonna be about five minutes. Or you can pop them onto a baking sheet and bake them for maybe eight minutes, but mixing them every couple of minutes. You mix them because they burn quick. Now we can add in our amazing apples. This is actually really good with Granny Smith apples, even though those aren't my favorite because they're so tart, they add like a lot of zing to the bread. But Honeycrisp is great too. I'm also adding in my nuts. Just pop those right in. It's like so weird to me that this is like just all done in one bowl, but it's for ease of use. Oh wait, I forgot to tell you. So I was looking up the history of apple bread. So I'm always wondering like, where do these things come from? What's the deal? And I knew it couldn't be that old because it uses baking powder and baking powder is fairly new. It's like from the 1800s, <laughs> which is not that long ago, I tell you. <laughs> Anyways, apple bread was a thing, but it was a thing for people to do with yeasted breads. So like imagine making a normal bread, but you wanna save on flour because milled flour is so expensive. And the cheats people would do would be to use like potatoes or to use apples. And you make this bread with like basically applesauce. They would mush the apples up and it would be yeasted and slightly sweet. And you know, it was fairly popular, but it was also a thing of hardship. It was really because you couldn't afford to use all flour because flour was just dear. This looks great. It's softening up already. And I hope you can see that the apples are just releasing their liquid immediately into this and making it delicious and soft. This little cutie bakes up in an eight by four inch loaf pan. This is more like a traditional pound cake loaf pan. Most of the time we're using a nine by five, but I just wanna show you, it's fairly different. See all that, ah. see all that extra space? You can use this loaf pan. I would reduce the cook time maybe by five minutes. It will be flatter though. It's still gonna be delicious. Use our extra butter paper. A little bit of butter on the sides, more on the ends. I don't normally just use the butter paper because it can be really hit or miss when you're doing cakes, but for loaf pans, it's nice. Especially because we're gonna have a magical piece of parchment paper that goes right in here and has beautiful little handles that we can use to lift our loaf pan out with ease. It'll be so amazing. <laughs> it has beautiful little handles that we can use to lift the loaf cake out, the bread, um, and it'll just make everything super easy, no stress, and the cleanup's better too. Get all that amazing batter out into your prepared pan. Use a little spatula and just smooth it out to a nice even layer. This bread is delicious, but what would make it better on top? Sprinkling of sugar. Whenever you finish a quick bread off with a sprinkle of sugar on top, it's giving it a nice crunchy crust. It's so nice to bite into and have that play of textures. Just sprinkle it on top and you can do like a tablespoon and a half. If you keep adding more sugar, it's just gonna be on top and fall. So a tablespoon and a half is more than enough. Should I play some walnuts on top for fun? I'm just gonna add a few walnuts here and there, I think it'll look really pretty. I added more sugar than I said I would. I always dream that these guys are gonna be like creme brulee on top with that crackly crust, but it only goes so far, so I'm just gonna keep doing it anyways. Never gonna learn from that mistake. This goes into the oven for about an hour, but everyone's oven's different, even your containers are different, so it's done when a skewer inserted in the middle comes out clean. Just check it in five minute increments, starting at maybe 55 minutes or so. You could even give it a jiggle though, and if it's like jiggling, ain't ready. Nope, nope, nope. Into the oven. After 55 minutes in the oven, this delicious and beautiful apple bread is ready to remove. 
so pretty, but wait till we slice in. Mm, warm and out of the oven. So soft, full of the apple and the spice and the crunchy walnuts. This, with a cup of coffee in the morning, is my idea of perfection, but it's delicious any time of day. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe, and if you like this video, check out my Apple playlist.